Hi folks, I'm Spencer and on today's episode of Court Mania we're hanging out with Nick Cage and Sion Sono in the insanity that is Prisoners of the Ghostland. This is Sion Sono's first English language film, first western film, despite the fact that it's mainly filmed in Japan and has quite a lot of Japanese in it. It was originally supposed to be shot in Mexico with slightly different cast but then Sion Sono had his heart attack and they moved the project back to Japan so that his health could, you know, he could, he didn't have to travel and he could be healthy. The plot, um, I will do my best. I don't really fully understand everything that happened in this. The basic plot is that Nick Cage plays a bank robber. He has been arrested and then is tasked with rescuing a woman called Bernice who's played by Sophia Batula, from this strange wasteland that she has run off to. He's tasked with doing this by the governor, played by Bill Moseley. And also, if he doesn't do this, he will explode because he's been put in this suit that has bombs on his arms, his neck and his balls. So it's sort of like a really hyper version of Escape from New York that then sort of goes into Mad Max territory. It goes into this sort of weird mystical realm. You've got sort of all this sort of Japanese culture merged with American culture. These sort of strange people out in the wilderness. There's ghosts, possibly, mutants. Yeah, there's a lot going on. It's pretty weird. Uh, Nick Cage has said it's like the weirdest or wildest film that he's ever done. And to be honest, he's probably onto something with that. It's a very odd plot. And like I said, I'm not 100% sure what was happening all of the time. Um, but I'll cover that a little bit more later. My granddaughter has been lost to us. I would have her return to me post haste. Now, performance wise, um, I mean, it's a Nick Cage film that he said is his wildest yet. You can sort of guess where all of the performances have been pitched uh, at, at about here. Um, I mean, Nick Cage himself is doing the thing that we all expect him to do. But, it, I mean, the role was clearly written for him and he's brilliant in it because it is a Nick Cage drop. There is a lot of shouting. He tells someone he's going to effing karate chop them. There's a bit where he stands up in front of a massive crowd of people and shouts the word, TESTICLE! And it's hilarious and brilliant, and only Nick Cage could pull it off. But there is a lot of other people taking a hefty chew on the scenery. Uh, Bill Mosley, mainly. Um, He's, you know, dressed in this sort of white suit, cowboy hat, red gloves, his big beard, and he's just, yeah, chewing the scenery. I mean, the, the, there's a few scenes between him and Nick Cage where you like, you are both just... It, there is sort of a one-upsmanship of, like, who can be more extra in this scene? And it, it works really well, and Bill Mosley is the right sort of person for this role. It's another case of where I don't think you could really see anyone else doing it, similar to how Nick Cage is in it. Sophia Petula doesn't get a massive amount to do. I, I really like her as a screen presence, but there's quite a lot of this in which she's just standing round looking very striking. I mean, she clearly has gone with the project. She doesn't look out of place. And she gets a, a good little fight scene at the end, which I wish was a bit longer because it really shows off, you know, the physicality that she has from being a dancer. And I think... More people need to put her in action-y roles because I think she'd be really, really well suited to it. But I think that's this, uh, that's a similar thing with Takasakaguchi who's in it. You know, the, the guy from Versus who gets a couple of fight scenes that are all right but doesn't perhaps get as much to do as you'd like. And he's a very sort of quiet, stoic role. And I would have much preferred if they'd given him a bit more dialogue and a bit more to do. His character feels really quite sort of... I don't know whether it's been cut back um, 
And I've seen that there is a scene with him that's supposedly missing from when it was shown at the festivals um, due to a, a sort of song, you know, rights issue. Um, his character does feel very sort of underused. And him as a performer is quite underused. He's a very charismatic char actor. And I think sort of sticking him in a sort of silent, stoic type was a, was a bit of a mistake, really. You know, versus he's so charming and cocky and knobbish, but you like him. I, I wish there'd been a bit more of that here. Each arm is equipped with an explosive device. Your trousers are also equipped with explosives. <laughs> really? The film is a, a very much a, a feast for the eyes. It's, it's shot in widescreen. And the cinematography itself isn't anything that I think people are going to be blown away by. It's a very sort of traditional exploitation film style. You know, you get a couple of zooms, some nice tracking shots, some slow motion, but nothing in, you know, there's no ridiculous camera moves that anyone's going to be completely blown away by. But that works fine because the set design, the costume design, colour palette, everything else is, is so interesting and striking. The world that they've created here is brilliant and I, I'd sort of like to see more films set in the world that they've created for this film. You have this, you have two key locations. You have the sort of town that it starts in, which might be called Samurai Town. I don't know whether that's actually just something that Nick Cage's character calls it at one point. Um, which is this strange mix of sort of a western frontier town, a sort of traditional Japanese village with sort of modern elements of sort of modern day America and modern day Japan where you've got these sort of neon or sort of electronic si scrolling signs on the side of these traditional Japanese buildings that have these sort of big sort of painted western town signs. It's weird and there's this, you know, there's lots going on and it's all in this sort of bubblegum pop colour palette and it looks fantastic. Um, and uh, you know you've got like traditional dress mixed with west Japanese traditional dress mixed with western outfits and then Nick Cage in this leather catsuit thing with bombs on it and it's just this weird mismatch and it works so well because especially because that's where the film starts and it really is a resting set of images then you go into the more Mad Max style stuff out in the ghost land which it's very Mad Max, you know, it's people with 17 different pieces of machinery bolted to their arms whilst other people walk around in rags and there's a whole thing with sort of mannequins and that works very well as well. It's perhaps not as unique or as visually arresting as the the Samurai Town stuff, but it gets, it gets enough, it's distinct enough from something like Mad Max that you don't just go, that's just a complete rip-off. There's a really cool bit with some white ribbons um, that works really nicely. But I think, you know, the Samurai Town stuff is the bit that's going to really capture people's imagination. This is the ghost land. A land of no escape. We are not the ones who hold her captive. Similar to the visual aspects, the score is also this sort of mismatch of sort of 80s synths, Western guitars and like sort of Japanese flutes and other instrumentation. There were a couple of orchestral moments as well. When it works, it's really interesting. And I like all those mismatched elements together. It perhaps isn't quite as striking as I think I would have liked it to be because the film itself is so sort of out there and energetic. There are points where I would have liked the... I didn't notice the score massively throughout certain parts of the film, and I wish they'd sort of amped it up just that little bit to match with the visuals a bit more. I do like... There's a few points where people sort of... I don't know whether this counts as soundtrack or not, but sound. There are, like, weird songs or chants that people do in the town or... There's like a sort of theatrical bit with some dancing where they explain some backstory. There's this weird wall of heads 
But obviously there are people in them, they're sort of spinning around, sort of singing this song, and it's weird and it's awesome. And again, it's just something distinct that I didn't think, oh, that's just that bit from Lund. It felt entirely unique and I really liked that. It's been two days and still she is missing. The weirdness is going to be much more of a draw. I was expecting the film to be more violent than it is. Um, and it isn't necessarily. Um, the, you know, there's like a few sword fights where I was expecting there's going to be, you know, limbs being lopped off and blood spraying everywhere. And there actually weren't. It's much more like something you'd seen in Kurosawa on where people just get sort of whoosh, and then they go down. There are some bloody moments and those work really well. I think just go into it, expect, not expecting that. Um, yeah, I was expecting it to be Gonzo in, in lots of blood and gore, which it just wasn't. It's very weird. Tonally, it's very strange. Um, like I said, I'm, I, I know some of it's been cut out. There must be a longer version of this film. I'd be very surprised if there isn't. Um, and when I was watching it, that was sort of bothering me, because I was like, hang on, we've just sort of jumped around quite a lot. The further away from the film I actually get, the more I quite like that there's this strange, dreamy, mystical element to the film, in which it feels like it's just this strange, abstract ethereal tale that's sort of being told and you don't have to fully understand what's happening because it's just happening. It's sort of a film that happens to you. Events just sort of roll by and you just go, okay, that's interesting. Um, I don't think that tone is going to work for a massive amount of people. In fact, I've seen some of the reviews for this film and they're dire. And I think it's in large part the fact that, that the tone and the propulsion of the plot is at this sort of weird pace of its own that it's just odd. And not in the odd way that I think people were expecting the film to be odd. But I think if you get on with it, that makes it really, really interesting. Um, it's... Right, OK, conclusion time. If you're a Nick Cage fan, there's a lot to like. Like him shouting testicle really loud, which is my favourite... Possibly my favourite moment in any film this year. Um, if... I don't think it's a great... It's not a great film it's a very interesting film and i'd like to watch it again to see what i actually got whether i remembered it right it's it feels like a dream that happened and i'm not sure it well exactly i'm not sure if it happened or whether i imagined it all um it's not a great sion sono film i don't think it's going to win over a Western audience who don't already know who he is. It doesn't... It doesn't necessarily feel like one of his films, although the more I think about this sort of weird ethereal quality, I think it might be. But it feels much more like a, a Takeshi Miike film. It feels very much like um, Yakuza Apocalypse. And again, I think that's a film that has so many great ideas and doesn't perhaps hold together 100%. Um, I guess if, if you are a Sion Sono fan, it reminded me the most of Tokyo Tribe, but that's only in the visuals, really. Um, in that it's got that sort of excess quality. But I do think it's it's just a really interesting film. It is, it's probably an interesting failure. I don't know if it is, though. I'm sorry, I'm rambling. But it, it's just an odd experience to watch. And one that I think people should. People should watch it. it you really, you've got to make your mind up for yourself because it's it's such an... It's such a strange experience to watch and it has all these weird qualities that I just think 
there, I've not seen a film actually like it. You can draw, like I said, you know, there's bits of Mad Max and there's just bits of other films that you go, hang on, I sort of recognise that, but they're not put together in a way that makes much sort of sense. It's just a rule onto itself. I'd love to know, A, how much changed after he had, um, you know, Sean sort of had his heart attack and died, nearly died. I, because he's just got this sort of sh strange otherworldly quality, almost like he glimpsed the other side and this is what it looks like. And also I'd love to know if it's been condensed and cut down, whether there's like a three hour version of it out there somewhere, because it feels like there is. But I don't actually, I'd be very interested to see if there is, what the other stuff is, but I'm also, I don't know, I quite like it as it is. So yeah, I like it. I don't know why, but it's good. So I'd I'd watch it again. You should watch it. Make up your make your mind up for yourself because I really don't know how to sell it to you any other way. That's my opinion, I think, sort of. Let me know down in the comments what you think of Prisoners of the Ghostland because I'm fascinated to know what other people think of this. Um, so yeah, let me know down in the comments. Like and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos. And I will see you next time.